thank you, Andrew, and thank you for agreeing to negotiate with me for seven and a half minutes to speak so that you can have the meeting at 8.30. Is that okay? <laughs> Um, this hall has seen many, many incredible meetings and incredible speeches over the years. And what we've heard tonight from Joe Glenton is a testament of decency, of humanity, of honesty, of perception of what the real causes and the real effects of this ghastly war in Afghanistan are about. Joe, we owe you a great debt of thanks for coming here and sharing those And Stop the War Coalition, founded in 2001, has played a very, very important part in political life in this country. When we founded the Stop the War Coalition in September 2001, only a few weeks, less than two weeks, after the attack on the World Trade Center, people said to us, be careful, the British people don't like it, the British people are going to be part of this coalition. No, they're not. No, they were not. They are not now, and they will not be in the future. We've now been nine years in Afghanistan. Billions of pounds have been spent. Hundreds of British soldiers have died. Hundreds of soldiers from other coalition forces have died. And thousands upon thousands of Afghan civilians and soldiers have also died. For what? For whom? For what purpose in the long run? I think the Pentagon let the cat out of the bag when they announced the levels of mineral deposits that they had discovered in Afghanistan. I think the arms dealers of the world, the arms dealers of the world let the cat out of the bag when you realise what profits they've made over the equipment that's being sold in Afghanistan. But, and there's a big but here, this war cannot go on. This war has to stop, and everybody knows this war has to stop. They know it's unsustainable, they know it's wrong, and they know it's spreading over into one country after another, after another, after another. And so, when we opposed the deployment of troops to Afghanistan in 2001, we did so because we felt this was going to become a war between what was loosely termed Western culture and what was loosely termed the Muslim world. The losers in this war have been all those people that died in Iraq and Afghanistan. All those soldiers that have died, all those civilians that have died, all those lives that have been lost. But there's something else that we've lost because of this war. We've not only spent billions of pounds on it, which has damaged every aspect of British public life, damaged every aspect of our public services and will continue to do so, we've also damaged our own civil liberties, damaged the liberties of everybody in this country as one piece of draconian anti-terror law after another has been passed and damaged community relations in this country as well. So it's our freedoms, our lives that have been damaged as well as the lives of the Afghan people. And I did an interview for Talk Sport Radio last night. George Galloway wasn't available, I think. And uh, they asked me about aspects of British foreign policy and where I thought um, Liam Fox was wrong. I mean, it wasn't very long in the interview, so I was only able to give a quick heads up on it to make a couple of points. One, that if there is not enough money to maintain public services in this country, if thousands upon thousands of public service workers are expected to take redundancy, pay cuts, pension cuts, and everything else, why on earth are we wasting billions on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? <laughs> and the second point I made was that we should not proceed with the renewal of the Trident nuclear missile system, and instead we should abandon all nuclear missiles. <laughs> fundamental review, yes, of defence policy, and that is happening, except we're apparently not reviewing aircraft carriers and nuclear missiles, because they're not part of defence policy, they're something separate and different. But we should review our whole mentality, our whole foreign policy, and our whole position in the world. Why do we, as a country of 65 million people in the northwest corner of Europe, presume to be able to afford armed forces and a military system with global reach that we can interfere in any country, in any part of the world, at any time, on behalf of NATO and on behalf of the, um, the interests of the world. 
those that wish to exploit the world's resources. There was a Tory MP who was your MP temporarily, Joe, while you were incarcerated, Bernard Jenkins, who said that in an unstable world where there's lots of refugees flowing around, where there's lots of demand for natural resources, and there's lots of natural catastrophes pending, we've got to arm ourselves to the teeth, protect ourselves to the teeth, and be able to intervene anywhere in the world at any time. Wrong, 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 and wrong. In a world where there is a shortage of resources, in a world where there's instability, in a world where there's refugee flows, we need to think in terms of sharing, in terms of humanity, in terms of peace, in terms of international justice, not in the terms of Blair and Bush in 2001 playing the blood price for a disaster of American foreign policy. That is what we're doing. So I'll finish with these two points for you. We've come a long way, we've marched a lot, we've met a lot, and we've met some amazing and brilliant people along the way, of which Joe is one of the finest and one of the most brilliant for what he's gone through and the principles in which he's shown. And at last, and this is for the first time ever, there's going to be a vote in the House of Commons on Thursday, September the 9th, on the principles of involvement in Afghanistan. That's because of lobbying by a number of us to get this particular vote. And so I'm asking you all, contact your own MP, whatever party, whoever they are, and say two things to them. Be there on September the 9th, Thursday, September the 9th, and vote against British involvement in Afghanistan and vote for the withdrawal of British forces. We're going to be demonstrating outside, we're going to be lobbying, but we need to be there in very large numbers to put some backbone into those MPs that wrongly voted for supporting the Iraq war and have been woefully silent on the disasters of the Afghan war for all these years. That will help to build the campaign, help to put the pressure on those that seek to hide behind immunity and parliamentary silence, and it will also help to build a massive demonstration in November. My friends, we're on the way. The military top brass know the game is over. The political top brass know the game is over. The intelligence services know the game is over. And as the truth comes out about the reality of that occupation, the reality and the brutality of it, it can't be long before the last British soldiers are brought home from Afghanistan and at last the people of Afghanistan can decide their own fate and their own future free from foreign interference and free from the ravages of those mineral companies that want to grasp all those natural resources from Afghanistan. We're on the way. Stick with it. March with it. Argue with it. We're going to win. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, Jeremy, for rounding up the memory within the meeting superbly. Thanks to all our speakers, Tony Van, Yeah.